On today's show, we talk LTV's second anniversary. Andreas tells us all about his new project, Third Key Solutions. Stephanie tells us about the Book of Satoshi, a newly released compilation of posts and emails authored by Bitcoin catalyst Satoshi Nakamoto. Stephanie voiced the audio version of it. It's available on audible.com now. Recently, Bitcoin Talk got subpoenaed as part of a Butterfly Labs investigation and handled it pretty well, actually. And we wrap today's show with a conversation about Ripple in the aftermath of a million dollar freeze orchestrated by Ripple Labs, facilitated by their protocol and executed by the exchange platform it all happened on. We talk about the duality of ability and responsibility. It's a good one. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Let's Talk Bitcoin. The gang's all here today and we're doing a host recording with me, Adam and Andreas. Not only is today a host recording day, but it's also kind of a special day for us because we are celebrating Let's Talk Bitcoin's two year anniversary today. So happy birthday to us, guys. I, I'd sing a song, but unfortunately, that particular song that you're thinking about, you can think about it in your head, but you can't sing it out loud on a podcast because the copyright owners would try to charge us a fee. So happy birthday. Let's Talk Bitcoin. Yes, indeed. But I just wanted to say to all the listeners, thanks for listening for the last two years. It's been a real pleasure to do this show with both of you guys, too. I'm really glad that we're still going. Absolutely. This has been fantastic. Thank you so much again to both of you for doing this, for continuing to, to show up and to talk about this stuff. It's, it's an interesting topic, absolutely. But doing it for two years has been a long time. I've done more episodes of this show than anything else. I don't think it's the longest chronolo chronologically yet for me, though. Yeah, but it's a third of the lifetime of Bitcoin. Think about it that way. Does that make us a traditional institution in Bitcoin? Well, I think that we're a legacy institution at this point. Yeah, it's been two years, but like 10 bit years. So thanks to the listeners, especially because we certainly wouldn't be here without you. So we've been talking about uh, multi-sig for now, I guess, about six months, you know, in terms of actual implementations that were out there. And the concept has been floating around since very early in the life cycle of Bitcoin. Andreas, you know, you're one of kind of the, I wouldn't call you a trust broker, but you're one of the more reputable individuals in the space. And so it was really interesting to see your latest project, Third Key Solutions. Can you kind of talk to us about what it is that you're doing with Third Key? Ausnahme machen und es auch in Deutsch übersetzen. 
ya algunas semanas tengo escrito en mi lista de tareas por hacer de traducir el video hashtag BTC4. Now already some weeks ago I have written on my to-do list to translate the video BTC4, hashtag BTC4. Schon seit ein paar Wochen habe ich äh, auf meiner To-Do-Liste geschrieben, ähm, den Video BTC4 in Deutsch zu übersetzen. Estoy segura que esta idea puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente. I'm sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten äh, finanziell helfen kann. Y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin. And give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und motivation geben, um über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im moment is the price of Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my fir the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanos Enigma, e explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanos Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die idea besteht hauptsächlich en folgenden, folgenden. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. Bitcoin adressen in Papier ausdrucken, um, minimum 10 or besser gleich 100. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. 
Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero. And the next time you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas, and for your friends, of course, und für deine Freunde natürlich, o tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante, or maybe a tip in a restaurant, oder trinkgeld im restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también, Copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin, de direcciones de Bitcoin. Or when you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die... Uh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüsseln, ähm, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Escribir la fecha más plus cuatro años eh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus, Four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre, ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin, eh, en estos cuatro años yo lo vuelvo a tener, tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in, this, um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, schau, das ist der private Schlüssel. Um, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Schlüssel. Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way, you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. En mi video antiguo he explicado uh, cómo he tomado la decisión de los cuatro años. In my old video, I explained how I made the decision for the four years. In meinem original video habe ich erklärt, wie ich zu 
die Entscheidung getroffen habe äh, mit den vier Jahren. A continuación voy a pegar este video. Now later I will paste this video. Im Anschluss werde ich diesen Video ankleben. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy económico. Uh, at the moment the price of Bitcoin is very cheap. Pero casi todo el mundo tiene muy poco dinero para invertir. But almost everybody has a very little money to invest. Debería decir que esta idea me vino hoy especialmente cuando vi otra vez una chica ahí pidiendo dinero por la calle. Actually, I must say first this idea today I got especially when I saw again um, one girl begging for money in the streets. Me gustaría ayudar, pero yo tampoco me sobra mucho el dinero. I would really like to help everybody, but I, I don't have either too much money. And así que me vino la siguiente idea. So I got the following idea. It's, uh, it's más bien un juego. Uh, it's uh, rather a game. Um, lo que es muy importante elegir un monedero de Bitcoin que solo tú mismo, mismo tienes la llave privada. What is very important to choose um, Bitcoin wallet a company which you only possess the private key. For example, uh, blockchain.info. Por ejemplo, la empresa blockchain.info. Luego, imprimir en papel um, la llave privada y también guardarlo tú mismo. Then to print in paper the private key and uh, of course save for, for yourself that private key. Bueno, ya estamos imprimiendo, imprime por lo menos 10. So now we are already printing, so at least print 10 directions, 10 direcciones. Luego pones algo de Bitcoin, una cantidad, lo que, lo que te da la gana en esta dirección. Then you put some Bitcoin, uh, the amount, whatever you want in, that, in these directions. Y la próxima vez que sales de casa ya tienes algo que dar a los que están ahí pidiendo por la calle. And the next time you go out of the house, you have already something to give for these people who are begging on the streets. Y por ejemplo, y claro, para tus amigos, amigas, and for your friends, of course. Eso da motivación a la gente para aprender Bitcoin y Uh, this gives motivation for the people to learn about Bitcoin. Y la parte del juego consiste en lo siguiente. And the game part uh, consists in the following. Explicas a la gente, mira, esta es la cla clave privada, que es la clave secreta. 
you explain to the people, look, this is the private key, which must be secret. And uh, you have it and if, uh, me and uh, explicas, esa persona y yo mismo la tiene. Y antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié un poco de idea de hasta cuatro años. First I thought of five years, but then I changed uh, my opinion to four years. Later explain. Después lo expli explico por qué. Les dices, mira, tienes cuatro años para poner esta cantidad de Bitcoin a otra dirección. Si no lo, lo has quitado después de cuatro años, yo lo quito. So you explain them, you have four years to take this Bitcoin out of this direction, of this secret uh, key direction. If uh, you don't do it, uh, I do it after these four years. So you lose this. That's the, this part of the game. It's uh, la parte del juego. He creado este hashtag uh, BTC4 para hacerlo un poco popular. I created this hashtag BTC4 to make it a little popular. Antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié a cuatro porque te has dado cuenta que en los Simpsons la gente tiene cuatro dedos. Y Solo do, Dios tiene cinco dedos. Um, first, I thought of five years, but then I changed my mind to four years. Um, did you notice that in The Simpsons, people have four fingers and only God has five fingers. Uh, I'll show some pictures. Voy a enseñar algunas imágenes de los Simpsons. De los manos y dedos de Simpsons. Some pictures of the hands and fingers of Simpsons. Uh, pero antes quiero recordar que um, es muy probable que en también cuatro o cinco en los próximos años el valor de Bitcoin puede subir mucho. Just want to remember before that uh, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin can rise very much in these next years. Así que si solo pones una cantidad pequeña más tarde puede ser de gran ayuda. Even if you just put a little small amount later, it can be big help. Uh, no solo para... Bueno, es un juego. <laughs> si la persona lo quita antes de cuatro años, para, es para esta persona. Si no, es para ti. Si te recuerdas y guardas bien la llave privada. So uh, it's, this is the game part, if uh, the, the person takes the money out, it's for that person, but if they forget it after these four years, you can take it out, and it can be really... <laughs> bueno, imprimir también la llave pública y la llave privada, y si por ejemplo, okay, first translate. Print not just the private key, but on also the public key. Así que si, por ejemplo, explicas a la gente. Mira, si alguna persona quiere enviarte Bitcoin, pero tú no tienes ninguna dirección, así que puedes dar este, esta llave pública a la persona. Mira, muy bien, la llave pública, no la llave secreta. 
das a esa persona o cualquier persona y te pueden enviar un Bitcoin a esa dirección. So, remember, uh, the public key you can give to anybody and if somebody wants to send you some Bitcoin and, you, and this person doesn't have, have any, so you have already this public address where they can send you Bitcoin. So we've been talking about uh, multi-sig for now, I guess, about six months, you know, in terms of actual implementations that were out there. And the concept has been floating around since very early in the life cycle of Bitcoin. Andreas, you know, you're one of kind of the, I, I wouldn't call you a trust broker, but you're one of the more reputable individuals in the space. And so it was really interesting to see your latest project, Third Key Solutions. Can you kind of talk to us about what it is that you're doing with Third Key? Over the last several years, we've seen a lot of very bad security issues come up, especially with companies that have custodial control over people's money. So the uh, empty Gox debacle and, and many others like that. Now, multi-signature technology offers a potential solution to that, but technology is not enough. Multi-signature technology is part of the puzzle, but you also need operational plans and people and training and various other things to put together in order to achieve higher levels of security in any company. Third Key Solutions came out of that need. And over the past 10 months or so, I have been assisting Pamela Morgan, the CEO of Third Key Solutions, in building multi-signature governance programs for companies. And as part of those, holding the third key. After doing that for 10 months, she realized that this was something that should be done as a separate business. And we decided to start Third Key Solutions and I joined as the CTO. And what Third Key Solutions does is offer key management services consulting, but also the ability to generate and store a key securely offline in cold storage, and then use that key to sign transactions when a recovery is needed. So take, for example, a situation where a company, Bitcoin startup, let's say, has just received money from investors and they have some of this money in Bitcoin for a variety of reasons. Probably not a good idea to just put that money in the personal account of the CEO. That creates opportunities for loss and theft by hackers and all kinds of security concerns, but it also creates too much concentration. What if the CEO decides to grab the money and go? We certainly have seen that before. So it makes sense to have a multi-signature where maybe three signatures are issued and two of those signatures are required to spend funds. The CEO has one and maybe the chief financial officer or one of the investors has the second key and they use that to disperse funds every month. And then the question is, what do you do with the third key? And the best practice in the industry is to take that third key and have it generated and held by a completely independent third party, a separate company that holds that key and holds it in multiple locations in cold storage, geographically dispersed, and that generates that key completely independently. And that means that 
if one of the two primary key holders loses their key or becomes incapacitated or something goes wrong or one of the keys is compromised, then the other two keys, including the offline key, can be used to recover the funds and do a sweep transaction. That's basically the primary service.